All right, are you looking to get into TIG welding? It's a ton of fun and it's brought me over two decades of complete joy doing it. Now, when I first started to learn to TIG weld, I'd seen people doing it professionally in person. Looking at it when it was all finished, it was like jewelry to me. The way that it required a really close attention to detail and how people could eventually develop their own style and technique of doing it. After seeing it, I was obsessed, I was all in. But for nowadays, for people who are looking to learn, I honestly kind of find that there's too much information out there. A lot of people can get really overwhelmed as far as where they should start and when they start, what they should start practicing. All right, so I'm gonna throw things back to a story from when I first started teaching. I was teaching some welding stuff at a local college. I got the opportunity to work with some really cool students. One time I got the pleasure of taking a bunch of students through some TIG welding exercises. I started going over my approach of what I was gonna do to get them started and how I was gonna start them out with this exercise that I'm gonna show you in a second here. Now, when thinking of this story, two students come to mind. The first student was a very ambitious and motivated young dude. He was absolutely cool with the plan that I came up with for him. He was really hungry to learn, really motivated. Seeing students with this type of attitude gets me really excited to work with them. Kind of reminds me of how I felt when I first started to want to learn. Now, the second student in this story did not like the plan. He wanted to jump into the really flashy stuff that he had seen online. He did not have the time to work on the beginner exercises I was trying to show him. From what I remember, he pretty much just grabbed his stuff and left the welding booth. I think I saw him grab a stack of plate and head into a different welding booth. What are you gonna do, right? So here's what I went over with that other student. When I'm starting to get somebody into TIG welding, what we're gonna do is something very simple like this here. Doesn't look like much, does it? Now with this exercise here, all we are doing is practicing arcing up, learning to establish a really good and controlled puddle, and then with good control, extinguishing it properly. Now before I started to demonstrate this exercise, the eager student that I was working with in the booth was admittedly a little bit nervous. He had absolutely zero experience TIG welding. It's completely understandable. Now, if you are first starting to learn how to TIG weld, and if you're not really familiar with the process, paying attention to all of the different things you have to watch for can be really overwhelming. So this exercise here is a perfect exercise to start with. Now working on this one, this is gonna do a couple really important things for you. After I demonstrated and showed this exercise to this student, he realized that we were actually practicing without even using filler material to start with. And the exercise that I was showing him only gave him a few really important things that he had to pay attention to. The first thing that's really important is maintaining a consistent and stable standoff distance or arc length, whatever you wanna call it. Arcing up and establishing a clean and controlled puddle. And then once you're happy with it, extinguishing it properly. Properly. Now, when we're finished, we can flip up the hood and break down what we have done here. The first thing that we wanna look at is to make sure that we have dug into the heat enough to establish a good puddle. We want a nice round and consistent shape to the puddle. We're also making sure that we do not go hot enough that we overheat the area we are working on, but we also wanna make sure we are not too shy and we use enough heat. Without enough heat, you're not gonna see the puddle form the way we want. Now, with this exercise here, this is the perfect way to build somebody's confidence, and most importantly, their comfort. Now, after practicing this a few times, our our eager student now had a few new skills to work with. Now, the second thing that is really important that this exercise will do for you, take a look at my torch as it's been disassembled here. For somebody like my new student here, essentially looking at all these different parts, they're gonna have no clue what they're looking at for the most part. There's a bunch of different pieces that you need to know how they all fit together. When they're assembled properly, they are gonna ensure a proper gas treatment, as well as being set up correctly to deliver a stable and controlled arc. Doing this exercise here, he was actually able to ensure that all of the parts in the torch were assembled correctly. If any one of these pieces is out of order at this point, we are gonna see contamination or problems with our arc right away. And this is all gonna happen in the most simple setting. So making sure our torch and our arc conditions are perfect at this stage is very important. Now, practicing without filler material also makes this so much more simple as well. As a matter of fact, in my online TIG welding program, we actually go through about five welding exercises before we even start introducing the filler material. In doing so, I can teach a ton of in-depth technique comfort and understanding. And we keep things super simple at this point so that when we finally introduce the variable of filler material, it is much more easy to understand. Okay, so at this point here, let's check out how our other student is doing. So like we talked about, he insisted on practicing the flashy, more challenging stuff. Outside corner joints, fillet joints. Those are two joints I specifically remember him being really excited to learn, but both of these students had absolutely zero experience with TIG welding. They were both starting at the exact same level. 
Now this one student skipping the earlier exercises that we were working on, we're essentially, we're just practicing to make sure everything's running clean, as well as learning some really basic and important techniques. If this student here had run into any problems, he would have absolutely no clue what was going on. Starting out with a more challenging joint like this, and unfortunately getting results that kind of look like this, he would not have been able to determine whether the contamination was coming from the material, his gear being set up correctly, or some kind of problems with his technique. A lot of the time when people are just getting going with TIG welding, some stuff can look really jacked. And to be honest, it's usually just a problem with the setup or torch or something like that. Starting with a simple exercise like this one here, not only have we learned some really good ways to ensure that we are comfortable and the understanding of how to establish and control a good arc, we are now 100% sure that our gear is set up correctly as well. Two birds with one stone. All right, now before I jump into the second thing that we're gonna learn here, all of these diagrams and graphics that I've been showing you in this episode here, these are available for you to download in a free PDF textbook. Hang tight until later in this episode, I'll tell you how to pick those up for yourself. But let's get into the next step after we are comfortable with the first thing that we learned here. We are gonna move on to an exercise that we call the stringer beads. Essentially all these are is basically just running passes on a flat piece of plate. I talk about this exercise all the time on my channel. This is absolutely the most important time you could spend behind a welding helmet practicing or warming up for something. After 20 years in the industry of TIG welding, I still do this all the time. We're gonna take the skill that we learned of properly establishing and controlling the arc, getting a proper puddle going and controlling it, we are now gonna introduce the variable of filler material and run some full passes. Now I showed this next step to my eager student and he was absolutely thrilled. He ate this exercise up. After everything that we've done already, this step makes way more sense. It's way more approachable by this point. It isn't intimidating anymore because of the control that we learned in the first exercise. This is a really great way to get into some real welding without biting off more than we could chew. At this point, we're really gonna focus on staying in nice and tight with the standoff distance. You can see as I'm doing this, look how close I am at the beginning of the pass. And as I finish the pass, I have maintained this consistent and I am still in nice and tight. As we add filler material to a well and properly established puddle to control the edges of the pass to remain as consistent and smooth as we can get it and making sure from the start of the pass to the end of the pass that our width is remaining consistent as well. These variables are the main things we are working on in this exercise here. Controlling the width at this stage is so, so important. And again, all these PDF textbook pages are available for you to keep. Hang tight and I'll show you how to get them. But next, let's check in with our other student here. By this point, he was banging his head against the inside of his welding booth, trying to get anything properly established to get a fillet joint going. It's gonna be virtually impossible to learn without really understanding how width and profile and controlling these variables goes. When working with a challenging joint like that, controlling everything right at the start is vitally important. Trying to learn all these variables right off the jump on the fly. Even though this dude was super confident with what he was doing, his frustration was definitely starting to boil over. Now at this point, we have learned how to properly establish and control an arc, how to comfortably manipulate it, adding filler material to the mix, and now we are working on the details of maintaining consistency and shape to the profile. And this is where something really interesting happened. My student lights up to just start a new pass and instantly everything he was doing looked really dirty. We had a problem with contamination right out of the blue. So of course we stopped to check what was going on. The first thing we checked obviously is the gas bottle to make sure that wasn't empty. No problem there, it was all good. But after establishing that the gas was good, we found the problem right away. The next thing I looked at was the piece of filler material my student had just picked up. And we could see that that new piece of filler material he had just picked up was smeared with like grease or wax or something. It was the filler material that was contaminated. We found it right away. I was pretty relieved it wasn't something a little more complicated. But then my student stopped me with a realization. All of a sudden he turned to me and he said, I can see why working in the order of these exercises is so important now. We practiced the first exercise and when we did that, I saw that everything was running perfectly. Basically that exercise helped us to rule out any problems with torch or gas. The first variable to check is that the bottle was empty, which apparently was all good, or we can check the filler material. It was the only new variable we added to the mix here and all of a sudden we had a problem. Bingo. So he was right, this is absolutely the reason that we start simple. Taking a look at the other work our student was trying to do, there's all kinds of problems with contamination and all kinds of stuff. He was constantly dipping his tungsten because he was uncomfortable. The filler material he was putting in did not look clean at all. It was almost impossible to tell where the problem started and where it all came from. So starting with the first exercise that we learned is absolutely why this process is so important. If we ever run into any problems down the line, we can kind of use the last place we were at as a checkpoint. 
All of the stuff we had practiced before this, we knew that we were absolutely good up until this point. If you run into any problems beyond this, we now know that any new variables that we have added are probably the cause of the problem. At the point we were at, we realized that the new variable of filler material was the problem right away. Super easy fix. Do not make things more complicated for yourself. Take things in steps like we're doing here. You're gonna develop a more thorough understanding of the process and ways to troubleshoot any problems if they pop up. Okay, so now the last step that this student and I started working on together was finally running some full joints. He was really excited. So think of how much more sense it makes to take on the fun stuff at this point now. We have completely eliminated any problems of our gear giving us headaches. We have developed a complete understanding from zero experience at the start. And we have developed some good control and manipulation and understanding of things with the stringer beads exercise taking what we've learned up to this point and now applying it to some actual joints. This student had a much easier go at a lot of the flashy stuff he wanted to learn and he got some crazy results right away. This is exactly the same as the strategic approach I take with my online TIG welding program. Breaking things down into strategic steps and building on the understanding that somebody has learned in previous exercises by the time that a student gets to the real lessons like this in the program. They have a much easier time getting the success they want. This program was built off training people in the industry for years. It's absolutely the way that I wish I could have learned when I first started. Now, as for our other student, I feel really bad because it didn't really end up that well. From what I remember, he said he actually wasn't interested in learning to weld after all. What can I say, I tried. But unfortunately, this is super common. A lot of people who show a lot of interest and excitement about TIG welding, but when they start, they experience frustration and they don't know where to start properly. When they get stuck, it turns a lot of people away. This is why I have made my online TIG welding program my YouTube channel that you are watching right now, and the textbook pages that I give away on my YouTube channel all the time for free. There's a link in the description below. This takes you to my website where you can download them, print them off and keep them, it's free. You can use them to watch this episode again, and you can follow along with everything that we have learned here. Go print that off and keep it for yourself. Go out today, do a random act of kindness for a stranger. My name is Dusty, Phil and Chill, we'll talk soon, peace.